when we talk to smaller operators, they're like complaining about the fact that they don't have time to grow their portfolio and they're, they're running around like crazy. So it's really important to identify the recurring tasks that could be delegated easily to others and then focus on your business, growing your business, making sure that your financials are in good shape rather than responding to like Wi-Fi troubleshooting issues in the middle of the night or answering like why early check-in is not available like with a 10 time like in a week to different guests. Welcome to Short-Term Rental Solutions, a show for hosts and property managers looking to overcome obstacles, maximize revenue, and optimize their short-term rental business by learning from the innovators who are designing the solutions that are shaping our industry. Hello, everybody. Welcome to this week's episode of the Short-Term Rental Solutions Show. This is going to be a great episode completely well worth your time because we're talking about something that's important to people in the short-term rental industry kind of across the spectrum. And that is the concept of scaling and how to grow your business, specifically with how to use remote team members and remote staff to help you um, not only scale, but also there are people who are, you know, choose to hire a property management company because they're afraid of the time commitment and obligations that are involved with um, self-managing. And if you understand and are able to take advantage of some remote staffing options, then it could potentially unlock the ability to you, for you to successfully self-manage a small handful, a small portfolio of properties. So we are here today with Ari, who is the founder and CEO of Extend Team. And so Ari, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Excited yeah. to be here. Great. Thank you. Would you just take a moment to introduce yourselves to the listeners and viewers today and tell us a little bit about your journey into the short-term rental industry and how you came to found Extent Team? Absolutely. So I got into the vacation rental business by mistake while I was getting my industrial engineering degree. Uh, as I believe I was like a sophomore at the time, like at USC here in Los Angeles, California. And a friend of mine decided to take a semester off, like he was having some personal issues with his girlfriend at the time. So my journey into short-term rental started by stumbling his one-bedroom apartment in downtown LA on VRBO. Like back in the day, like Airbnb wasn't even, even like out there, like and VRBO was charging based on the number of photos that you upload. It was like a directory similar to Craigslist. That's how my journey started after the 08, 09 real estate crisis. And I, I formed like a property management company, like here in California, and then got involved into other short-term rental ventures as well. Yeah. So I'm sure that experience of, you know, property management and whatnot, you really understand kind of intimately the pain points and the things that are involved with once you get to the point where you need staff, scaling, hiring, training, all of that. Absolutely. Like, and honestly, like when I was running my own company, as I told earlier, like I was a full-time engineering student. So I didn't have the budget like to hire like someone stateside or had the time like to like run a portfolio of units. So it started as a need like for my own company. Like I started hiring people for my old company, remote, remote team members from overseas for my own property management company and that scaled from there. Yeah. So in your experience, both personally and then also working with people through Extend Team, what are the types of things that really make sense for people to look into possibly outsourcing through remote teams? That's an excellent question. Like specifically, like it's really important like to pay attention to like the type of person that you are hiring and also like what kind of tasks one is willing to delegate to someone else, right? Oftentimes we, or our portfolio companies, like the companies that we work with typically have like about a few hundred units. But uh, when we talk to smaller operators, they're like complaining about the fact that they don't have time to grow their portfolio and they're, they're running around like crazy. 
So it's really important to identify the recurring tasks that could be delegated easily to others and then focus on your business, growing your business, making sure that your financials are in good shape rather than responding to like Wi-Fi troubleshooting issues in the middle of the night or answering like why early check-in is not available like for the 10th time like in a week to different guests, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So definitely guest, guest communication is something that's relatively easy to, you know, document the answers to frequently asked questions and then pass that off to someone who can help. I would say that's the like low hanging fruit. Eight, 75 to 80 percent of our team members like work in a, some sort of like guest communications, guest services slash reservations role. That doesn't mean that you won't be able to outsource or delegate some more specialized roles to uh, remote team members, whether they're based like stateside in a different state or overseas. Some other positions that we found success is revenue management, marketing coordinators, executive admins maintenance coordination and dispatch position. So we even like hire like full stack developers for like some of the uh, property management companies that were like building their own property management system. So anything that could be done remotely, like we can help you with that. That's great. That's great. I think that when people contemplate, you know, this concept of remote staffing, if you're not familiar with it, even the thought of getting started is pretty overwhelming. So what's kind of some tips or best practices that you would give someone who hasn't done any of this before, doesn't even know where to start? How do you successfully kind of get into this? That's a good question. Like, I guess like the key thing is like knowing what, knowing and clearly like defining what tasks you're willing to delegate to someone else and what business functions you're willing to let go. So for instance, if you're like hiring someone for guest communications, you need to set expectations and tell that individual, I expect you to like respond to all incoming OTA messages in less than X minutes, Mm -hmm. or I expect the phones to be answered like within three rings. These are like things like that we teach our team members through what we call extent team university, but we work with like over like 150 companies right now in various sizes, smaller operators with a handful of units all the way to publicly traded REITs and everyone runs their business a little bit differently. So you need to like, really like put what's your in your head and what your like SOPs are like on a piece of document. And it can be as simple as a Google doc or a word document. It doesn't have to be like a SharePoint or like internal Wikipedia or Confluence you just need to like. Set up your SOPs so that your remote team members know whether like they're supposed to grant like an early check-in for free because you're more focused on get the guest experience or whether they should be charging X dollars for an early check-in if the unit is available because profits come first, right? They need to understand like how you run your business. Yeah, the documentation of that. And there's actually, well, and I'll back up, SOPs. In case people aren't familiar with that acronym, that stands for Standard Operating Procedures. So if you, you know, however you prefer to run your business, like your example that you just illustrated with how you would potentially handle someone who was inquiring about an early check-in or a late checkout. Just basically taking the time to document that. And, you know, I know that a lot of people choose to use a screen recording software, maybe like a Loom or Snagit, where as they're just working, without really making the extra step of formally trying to do something above and beyond their normal activities. They just capture themselves going about their daily operations and work. And then that becomes a training video that could then be passed off and handed to remote team members to kind of begin that process. Absolutely. And one thing that our new clients typically do is like they get on Zoom calls just like we're on one right now and do screen share, like, and have the new team member marry you just like, just like they're sitting next to you. So that's, that's one other like way, like to train uh, remote team members, obviously. Yeah. Highly effective. I do use a remote team member myself and 
you know, a lot of the software that I use for various aspects of my business, for example, I use Asana, I use Canva for various things. You're able to create teams in those platforms, many of the platforms, even like your property management software, you can add team members typically and assign them various things. But then they can actually, as a the owner, basically, I can set up basic templates or basic flows and then they can just fall in and move through that flow that I've created. And it, it really does make a difference and simplify it. Yeah, like, and you know, like we work with like a wide spectrum of clients from different states and different parts of the country. Like, so some people like to keep it simple and they just use like a shared Google sheet. They put the tasks assigned to deadline. Whereas like we see like some uh, other companies using Jira, ClickUp, Asana, Trello, like different project management tools. So the key thing is like one question that I used to get a lot, like when I first got into the business is how would I know like if these people are not slacking off and working? And I asked the question, like, how do you know like that your like employees that are like sitting in the office are not slacking, like when you're like running around, running errands and when you're out of the office. So the key thing comes to like setting expectations, right? What is it that I'm expecting team members like to do like on a regular basis? And if there are like any ad hoc tasks or projects, who's responsible for it? What's the deadline and what's the scope of work? Yeah, the, the clear expectations and clear assignments does make a really big difference. So, okay, so now someone who's thinking, okay, this is something that I want to step into, that process of how do you then go about finding reliable team members? And it's interesting that with Extend Team, you guys specifically are niched down to the hospitality industry. Yes, like so our, our client base is short-term rental operators. So not only like the hospitality industry, but we focus mostly on the short-term rental space. We have a small division that handles uh, multifamily and traditional rentals, but we're extremely laser focused in the SDR space. And as a result, like we only hire people who work at like either like vacation rental companies or five-star resorts before who speak better English than I do. So we have like a bunch of boxes that people need to check before they they can become like an extent team candidate. Then they go to extent team university, like which we curated with our friends at KTN Kennedy training network Kennedy. It's a program that he created for us that educates individuals on the differences between like a stateside US based company and like a company that may be based, based in Asia, right? Like. The slang that Americans use, like how to communicate with guests, what to do at difficult situations, small talk, stuff like that is what we teach. But we also look at people's capabilities of being able to coach you. It's not very easy to find individuals who would, you know, like know this PMS and that revenue management system and has five years of experience, like in a guest communication tool. So we look for people's ability to learn those skills and their like attitude as well. That's great. And I hear you mentioning that there's kind of a vetting process. And so when people reach out and uh, connect with the extend team, looking for some remote team members, kind of that initial vetting sounds like has already been done. Correct. Like, so since we're like a fast growing company, like well, we always have like candidates, like what we call, like they're like on the bench, ready to be deployed because uh -huh. we sort of know more or less based on our sales figures, like how many people we would meet. And as a result, like we, we can place people in less than 14 days, typically much faster. It, it, the, the numbers go up a little bit. If these are like specialized roles, if you're looking for a full stack developer, like who's going to help you like build a module on your PMS, obviously we need a little bit more time and a little more to our like screening. Yeah. Yeah. So what, what would you say for people, they, they get a team member, they're working with them and it's maybe not working out the way they had imagined. What are some ways, I mean, I'm sure you guys have dealt with that, helping people with that connection. 
What are your thoughts on that, Debs, as far as how people can increase the odds of success? Because I know so many people who went and hired a VA or a remote team member and they had them for a few months and then they're like, oh, I ended up letting them go. So typically it really comes down to like what we talked about earlier, right? Like setting up expectations and training them. Like even if I were to hire like someone who would be sitting right next to me, it's very, it, it takes time like to transfer like the knowledge as well as like how one operates, right? Everyone operates a little bit different. And it's, you know, like my assistant, like Marion, like she's been with us for like three years. Now, like she knows how I operate. But if the more time and energy you put, put in to communicate with your remote team member, better they would be functioning. And I guess like this applies to like all sorts of relationships, whether it's like professional or personal, you just need to communicate. The typically like when we have issues where like our new clients are like not so happy about it, like we try to like turn, turn the mirror and like, so like, did you actually like teach them on your policy? Oh no, I was expecting this person to like, Move the sketch from, well, like if you didn't give them the authority, if you didn't tell them that they can move a guest from a two bedroom condo to a four bedroom oceanfront house, wouldn't you be upset if like the person took initiative and did that? Like it all comes down to training and communication. Yeah. And maybe the expectation on our end as the short term on a professional that there's going to be. A, a period that could potentially be a few months long where they're continuing. That learning is continual. Uh, you know, sometimes there's this urgency when you, you hire someone to be a remote team member because you're really eager to pass things off. Mm -hmm. And, you know, people who rush that handoff and who aren't willing to continue to kind of, like you said, mirror with them, walk with them side by side. And I found also, and you can maybe speak to this, the cultural differences, depending on where your remote team members are from, people from different countries can, you know, ex handle that feedback and that redirection and stuff differently. I work with someone from the Philippines personally, and I made sure at the very beginning of our employment relationship, I let that team member know it is okay if you don't understand how to do something please let me know if you have questions. I won't be mad. I won't think you're not doing a good job. Like, I don't expect you to know everything up front and it's really, really okay. And because I kind of diffused that right up front, I was thrilled when I saw that she was asking me questions and seeking additional input. And so then as the months have gone by, she's just continued to grow and become a more and more valuable employee. So I it's, don't know. That's been my experience. You're, you're spot on. Like it's a two-way street, right? Like communication needs to have flow like both ways. And one thing that I've seen is, I don't want to generalize, but like this typically happens with smaller operators. Like typically like when they come to us, they, they have some sort of immediate need, right? And they, they look, look at us as like, we would come with a magic wand and like, take all their problems away. The truth is like running a short-term rental business is not an easy job. Like, especially like when you're like small and you're just getting started. So sure, like we can't provide you talented people, but as a leader, as the owner of the short-term rental company, you also have to like roll up your sleeves and take the time to train these individuals. And due to the fragmented nature of the SDR industry, like everyone does things a little bit differently. Like, when you look at the hotel industry, which is a little bit more mature, like both in Europe as well as stateside or all across the world, the policies and processes are like more or less standardized, right? If you worked at a Hilton, even if you like go to like a Marriott group, like the check-in, like the, the, you probably would be using opera, like as the system, the housekeepers probably have the same uh, SOPs or similar SOPs. The VR industry is so fragmented, like it's. If you're like at a mountain destination, you may have to go to an office to get the keys. One may be asking you to strip the beds, believe it or not, like despite us being in 2023. Whereas like another company may be offering like daily, like turn down service. So it's very fragmented. And 
we we see a lot of success at companies that have a good culture and good leadership, if you will. But based back to what you said about cultural differences, like we welcome diverse people and we work with company team members, Philippines, Mexico, Chile, like, and everyone's a little bit different. So it's, it's really good to like have like open communication lines, as you mentioned, and tell your team member, listen, it's okay for you to not get something, but that applies to people that are based stateside as well. So open communication is key. Absolutely. And I think when I, I felt like as I've been willing to extend that grace, it's developed more. I feel like the relationship has developed more rapidly and the loyalty has come along much quicker because they immediately begin to feel like I care about them and that I'm willing to invest time and effort into them. I'm not going to just kind of make a quick assessment and, you know, let them go in a flinch moment, you know, because it hasn't worked out in the first 30 days, you know, it's and, okay. <laughs> and you know, like Marion, like who's been phenomenal, like in our uh, company's growth, she's seen like the company like evolve, like almost from day one. And just like me, like she's not perfect. She makes mistakes and you know, like her and I like built that working relationship. So if she makes mistakes, she owns it. Then it's fine. You know, we all make mistakes. We're not like super human beings or bots at the end of the day. People have good days. People have bad days. Yep. Yep. So, and I know that you guys do not like the term VA. A lot of people call them virtual assistants. Why is that, that you guys have strategically chosen not to call them VAs? Like something that I've decided to do you know, like from day one, like just because once based like in a different state or a different country or like 7,000 miles away from us, they're not virtual. They're like actual human beings. So why are we calling? I just thought I understand a concept of calling people or like based elsewhere, virtual assistants. They're not virtual. They're human beings. If we're talking about Alexa or Siri, like sure, like call those virtual assistants. But I think we want to humanize what we do. Like at the end of the day, like I fly out to the Philippines to meet with 400 plus team members that we have there. And they have families just like we do. They have kids, they, they have issues, they, they have social life. So like, they're like human beings, just like we are like, so I just don't like the concept of calling people virtual just because they're like not based in the U S. Yeah. I love that. And I absolutely agree with you. So I'm glad that you guys have taken that position and I'm happy to Support that with kind of the way I talk about remote team members. Is that, how do you guys choose to call them? We use like the word team members. But I think, yeah, remote team members is perfect. Yeah, same, like same, same basic thing. Okay, so let's, let's really talk very specifically about Extend Team now. Sure. Kind of what are the products that you guys offer? You know, obviously some sort of a remote staff and remote team product, but break it down a little bit more than. Absolutely. So we have like in a nutshell, like I don't want to bore you with a sales pitch, but in a nutshell, we have three product clients. One is our legacy product, which is, should be calling it product. It's a service. It's like dedicated to team members, right? So companies have managing anywhere from like 30 to like few thousand units come to us and they ask for like a team of like one team member, like team of two people or like 20 people, depending on their size. And in most cases, those dedicated resources handle some sort of guest communication or reservations positions. And these team members like work exclusively on one account, one, one client, right? So this is not a call center. Like they're like dedicated team members working the hours that you want them to work to just like anyone who would be like a W2F employee of yours. And they, in most cases, they work like US hours, unless you want them to work after hours. The second product that we have is our accounting services. That's like a shared service. We have probably like 12 or 14 people on that team right now. They help dozens of like US based companies with their like month end processes generation of their owner statements, accounts payable, income statement and balance sheet prep, anything that would be done 
anything that needs to be done to close close out the month. Remittance of local taxes to city, county, like any authorities. And if you have like a controller in place, if you're like a large company, that's fine. You know, like we work with companies of various sizes. Some companies outsource 100% of their finances to us. Some companies like have like a hybrid approach where they have some people sitting in the office, but they outsource like the data entry, entry of the invoices and like some admin tasks to our accounting services team. Last but not least, I'm really excited about this because this is our first true SaaS product, our first software product that we built for smaller operators called Tailwind. Tailwind is SDR Industries' first guest communication service that, that where we respond to our clients' OTA messages, swell calls, and text messages, and we aim to solve 90% or more of their issues. This is not like an after hours answering service where we just take the message and pass the buck to like an on call person. We actually integrate with our clients, uh, P PMSs and Airbnb accounts and VRBO accounts. So we respond to like all inbound guest communication, whether it's sent through OTA, text message, phone call, email, and we try to resolve the issues. And we, we've seen right now we're piloting with probably like 20 clients, 22 clients, and we've seen like phenomenal success. And the reason why we came up with that product is people in the industry have been hearing about extending. They're like, oh yeah, like I need guest communications. Great. But they didn't have the need of like, say like a five person team to cover 24, seven, 365, just because they didn't have a few hundred units. So with Tailwind, it's a flat fee per unit per month that our clients pay. And uh, we handle all the guest communications. And I think that's going to be gaining more tailwind in the upcoming uh, months. Yeah. Well, I actually kind of got not a sneak peek, but I got word of this. I had the opportunity to learn about this tailwind product before you guys had fully launched it. And I agree, you guys are bringing something to market that there is definitely a need for that. I don't want to say burden. It's really not a burden. I love communicating with my guests, but I also have a life, right? Yep. So it's great to think that I can, you know, and we already, there are tools that can automate guest messages. Like I have a standard message that goes out to guests automatically when a reservation is confirmed or automatically the night before they check out to remind them of the, you know, two or three things to do before they leave. But then there's always those little things that are, you know, specific custom questions or one-offs. And so those are when I have to pick up my phone and respond right away. And it's not that difficult, but, you know, when you're growing a portfolio of properties, the small things add up. And so, and, you know, we, you have, you have AI now, you know, there's lots of Places where people are like, oh, well, AI will be able to generate that message and potentially respond to even those custom messages. But I think that there's still a place where, you know, an actual human being can see that question or see the need that the guest has and be able to address it. So, and, you know, there's, it is, it's kind of like this enterprise level, you know, to this point. That solution has mostly only been available at the enterprise level. You know, big, large property management companies that do have, a, a, you know, staff and people mm -hmm. dedicated towards guest communication. But there's, there's just a tremendous amount of smaller operators and even just people who started with one or two properties that their trajectory is growing a portfolio, potentially becoming co-hosts. And nurturing themselves professionally to become potentially a property management company down the road. And so one of the barriers for people to be able to do that is potentially the time commitment that's involved. And so and having a, yeah, having a solution like Tailwind is really important. Absolutely. And it's not about the time commitment per se, but like what was bothering me, like when, I, before, when I, I'm going like 15 years back, like when I was running my own company, it wasn't much time that it took, but it was the fact that I had to be on call 24, 7, 365. Like I was going to movies, then like 
a guest is calling me because they either need to check in instructions and they can't locate the lockbox or the toilet is clogged, right? Like, so these are things that at the end of the day, like in my opinion, like this is not a real estate business. Like this is a hospitality business, like short-term rentals are mostly like leisure travelers and we need to be hospitable towards our guests and having that person on the phone, pick up the phone when it rings or uh, having someone to respond to text messages and OTA messages, it may not take much time, but the fact that it's not stackable and it, those messages may come at any time, like makes a lot of difference. And so far, like the feedback that we're getting is amazing because one, one mother like picked up the phone and she actually thanked me personally for like having her own life back because now like she can spend more time with her family and kids. Yeah. When you think about it, right? Well, I can give a personal illustration of this. Just this past weekend, our family went camping. We went camping into the mountains, went fly fishing, had a wonderful time. And I, w I looked at my, you know, calendar before I left, touch base with my guests, let them know there'll be this interval of time where I will not have internet service. You know, is there anything I could do for you before I go? And, you know, and then I immediately checked back with them. It, I would love to have not had to worry about that and just to not even think about it. I can be on a plane in airplane mode. I can be out of cell phone signal, any of these types of things. And my business isn't going to skip a beat. So fantastic. Fantastic. So let's go ahead. And I know that uh, you are willing to extend a bit of an offer to people from Extend Team. So why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, like so typically like with our all of our services, there's like a small onboarding fee involved. And we are willing to give 50% off on all our product lines, uh, product lines onboarding fees, like for people who mention the podcast, the Solutions podcast. Great. Great. That is fantastic. So thank you so much, Ari, for taking Thanks some time. Thanks for having me. Yeah, to speak with me. I loved it. Lots of really helpful information for people who have heard about, uh, you know, VAs, quote, quote, or remote team members, and maybe didn't know what that looked like. Really constructive, solid information. So Thank you for being on the show. And I, again, why don't you tell everybody, I, I think I forgot to mention it, but why don't you tell everybody where they can find you and Extend Team? Sure. Like, uh, obviously you can find us on extendteam.com and we'll be at a lot of trade shows. Like, you know, we'll be at VRMA, obviously we'll be at Streamline. I think we're doing live res next year track. So we'll be at almost every single trade show in the country. So just stop by at our booth, say hi. Or just go on extendteam.com and click on contact us. You can always email me at my personal email. It's ari, A R I, at extendteam.com as well. And happy to chat with you as well. Thank Great. you. Great. All right. Thank you again for tuning into the show, everyone. We love having these conversations with the innovators that are designing the solutions that are shaping our industry. If you have any questions about problems or issues that you are facing in your short-term rental business and want us to speak with companies that provide solutions for those problems, please be sure to reach out to us. You can reach me, Christiane, at strhub.com. You could also DM or message me on any of the social media platforms where you can find me. We want to know how we can help you and just grow your short-term rental business. So thanks again for tuning into our show.